Hello, and welcome to the Z Hut. Today, I'm going to show you how you can use an RC transmitter and receiver to control your Arduino project. Now, there's many different applications you could use this with your Arduino. Um, the one I'm going to show you is how to control a robot, but uh, you can also use these for controlling a drone. Um, you could use it if you wanted to control uh, the rotation of a security camera up on a tower or something. Lots of different applications this could be used for, but like I said, um, I've just put together a little circuit to demonstrate how to use this and receive and, uh, to, and control a robot. So basically we'll, we'll be using this stick, channel one, or no, that's, excuse me, that's channel two. We'll be controlling the uh, speed of the motor and the direction because we are using a uh, H bridge along with this circuit and then this stick here which is channel 1 will control a servo so let me grab it I've got it all put together here and we'll take a look at this first and then we'll go over and take a look at how how you write the code to be able to use this now I'm going to be powering this off a of wall wart normally you would if this was in a robot you would um, be using a battery, but uh, I went and grabbed mine and it was dead and I didn't want to wait two hours for it to charge to shoot the video. All right, oops, got everything turned on. All right, um, now first I want to mention, you can see the servo is just a little bit jumpy. This is a very inexpensive radio I'm using. So the analog stick um, is just basically a potentiometer in there, and it varies just slightly. The more expensive remotes you get, the RC controllers, will be a lot stabler. But if you're using this to control the steering, I mean, it's not moving much. And you can see as I move the stick, it does operate it. And then this stick will control the speed and direction of the motor. Now what we're using, let me unplug this. What we're using in the circuit is of course we're using a DC motor. And uh, you noticed it wasn't spinning very fast. I was only running uh, 12 volts roughly into this project. And this um, motor here is more for like 18 to 20 volts. It's just one I had sitting there that already had the end strip. So I just grabbed that. But what we're using to control it is we're using an H bridge. Now this is a dual, but we're only using one side of it. And you can see we've got the, uh, the motor, the positive, negative connected here. And what this is allowing us to do is to control the direction and the speed of the motor. Now to do that, we've got three pins from the H bridge that we need to connect to the Arduino. Now you can also run two motors off this if you wanted to run um, two motors for maybe like four wheel drive or two motors, one for each wheel in the back. So you could also do that, but for this example, I'm just using one. So what we're using first is the, um, the PWM pin that controls the speed is going to the Arduino pin 5. Then we've got the uh, N1 and N2, which control this side. The 2 and 3, and the other PW that's over here controls this side. Oh, and before I forget... Um, you have to pull, there's a little jumper on the end, you have to pull if you're going to PWM control it. Otherwise you leave that jumper on, it'll just be full speed. Alright, so the, like I said, the first one, the PWM, goes to pin 5 on the Arduino because that's a PWM pin. There's other ones you could use as well, just make sure it's on a PWM pin. Then the N1 and N2, which control the direction of it, goes to pin 4 and 3 on the Arduino. And from there, we'll jump over. Um, I have the servo here. And let me check. That is connected. I do believe that's pin 11. Yeah, digital pin 11, the servo. The control line's connected to that. And then the power, I got this little board here, so I had more power pins. And then you just put the ground and power to that. And one also, you don't have to use an Uno for this. Um, you could use any any of the, micro, the Arduino microcontrollers. I just used an Uno because it was a little easier to set this up real quick instead of having to put it all on a breadboard. 
Now then for the receiver, we have the two power pins down here and those run to the power block here. Then the channel one and the channel two come over and connect to the Arduino and that's on pin nine and 10. That's all there is to setting this up. Um, it's not very complicated. Like I said, this is just one example. There's lots of different ways you could do this. I'm just basically gonna show you how to do the receive by using the pulse in function in the Arduino sketch to be able to control all this off of your remote. So I don't think there's anything else we need to go over on the circuit. So I think what we'll do is we'll switch over to the computer and I'll bring up the, uh, the IDE. Um, also the sketch and everything, um, if you look in the description below there will be a link to my website and you'll find the sketch on there and I'll have a parts list. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go through and make a schematic for this. Um, we'll see. It's pretty simple on how to hook all this up. Um, oh, one more thing. I am powering the Arduino board, everything, off of the H-Bridge here because it has, if you run 12 volts into it, you can have a 5-volt output. Otherwise, if you're using a battery, you'd want to hook the uh, to the VN. I'm instead powering the Arduino on the 5-volt because we're getting regulated five volts out of this. So all right, well, I'm gonna fire up the computer and bring up the Arduino sketch and I'll catch you over there in just a moment. Okay, we are back and I've got the Arduino IDE opened up here and I got the sketch brought up. And uh, like I said before, you can go to the website and the links in the description below and you can copy this and paste it in your Arduino IDE to play with it. Um, most likely you're going to want to change it. This is just a demonstration of how to do this. Um, you can go ahead and modify and use this sketch if you want. Um, otherwise you can write your own. So uh, we'll just go through it real real quick. I'm not going to get too technical into it but we'll go over the key things. So first um, since we're using a servo we're including the servo.h library then we're naming a servo and I just called it servo 1. Then uh, I have all the pins marked here. Really good which pin to hook what to and what it's for. So um, they're all well commented to help you hook this up. That's why I'm not going to probably go ahead and make a schematic for this. I, there really isn't a point. But uh, as you can see we're defining the pins that the receiver channels are on. Uh, the PWM pin for the speed control the motor and the um, the pins that control the direction then we have some integers here and this is to store and convert values that we are receiving from the transmitter into the receiver that's connected to the Arduino. Next um, we're attaching a servo and that's on pin 11 then we're setting our pin modes then uh, we're digital writing the direction both those pins low, that way when this program starts up, the motor is not turning. And then we got the serial begin, and that's for testing because um, you're going to need to figure out what the high and low values are. So I've included that in the sketch. And after you use the serial monitor, when you hook this up, you can just comment. You just go like that and comment it out or delete it because you only need it for testing. but. It doesn't really hurt to leave it hooked up in case you wanna, you're having a problem and you want to just plug um, in your robot and diagnose it real quick. So next we're into the void loop and right here is how we are reading what is coming in from the RC transmitter. And we're just doing the pulse in and we're doing the channel one and the channel two, we're storing the values in there and we're pulling in the pulse off of those pins. Um, if you want to know, or, no, excuse me, want to know more about what the pulse in function is, just go under the help and uh, look under reference, and you'll find a ton of information on there about it. So then what we're doing again is we're serial printing this information so that you can basically map out your uh, transmitter to figure out what the high and low values are going to be. So once again, after you do that, you can just comment it out. And we're just printing the uh, channel one and then we're printing out the reading from channel one. 
you know, we're doing channel two the same way. And I did notice, um, just as I was getting ready to f shoot this, I got channel one and channel two mixed up for what they are in the receivers. So just remember that um, the channel two is actually channel one, and uh, that's going to be controlling um, the, um, oh, which one was that? The channel two is the speed, and channel one is the, uh, the servo. So what we're doing first is we're going to take care of the servo. So that's, well, it's called channel two, but it's actually channel one on the, the remote. And I'm sorry about that, but I'm sure this is going to still make sense to you how to do it. So what we're doing is we're using that value one integer, and we're mapping this. And I had a low range of um, about 1,100 and a high range of about 1,900. And what we're doing is we're mapping that over to a value of 10 to 170. Because your servo goes from 0 to 180, and I never like to go to the full extremes. You can if you want with your servo, but I always leave a little give in there. And then next, um, of course, we're writing that mapped value to the servo. Now next we're getting in to the speed and direction control of the DC motor we have hooked up. So what we're using is just a couple of if statements. And um, of course the stick is normally in the center position. So what we're doing is we're checking, and um, if the, uh, the value is uh, less than, it goes through, and then it maps it out, and it'll write the direction. And for one direction, you want uh, one pin low and the other pin high. For the other direction, you just reverse that. As you can see, we're mapping these values from between 25 and 255. You can go to zero, but most DC motors ain't going to do anything at zero at all. And I also did leave about um, a give of about 100 between the both directions. That way when the stick's in the middle, because it's a little jumpy, because it's an analog, just a potentiometer in there, it's not trying to jump, you know, just creep forward and backward a little bit. So that's just to uh, smooth that out. You could go less. You could probably just have like a 50 or 25 difference between the two, and you'd be fine. Like I said, um, just download the sketch, throw that uh, project I showed you together real quick, and play with this, and you'll figure it out real quick. It is pretty simple once you actually have it put together and you can play with it yourself. Otherwise, the last thing we have here is um, our last else if statement. If the channel 1 goes to 0, it writes both pins low. This is in case it gets too far away from your receiver, it's not receiving anymore, it's going to start getting zeros on channel 1 and 2. And what this does is keep your robot from running away from you and just keep going. Or if the batteries go dead on your transmitter or um, it accidentally gets turned off, your robot isn't going to keep going. It basically is just a safety to stop it. And I would recommend leaving that in. All right, and then I have this delay. Now, this delay, you'd probably want to take that down to, like, between 5 and 10. But I have the one-second delay on here right now for mapping out your transmitter to figure out what your high and low values are. So I would recommend at least having a 5 in there. Um, you can try it without it, but um, it seems to run a little stabler from about 5 to 10. All right, with that... I think we pretty much covered it all. Um, if you have any questions, um, leave a comment below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. And like I said, you go to the the website and uh, you can get all this. And uh, the link to it's in the description below. So I'd like to thank you for joining us here at the Z-Hut today. I hope you have a great day and have fun building.